Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today's video is called How Bad People Teach Us Life Lessons. So before I go into this, I just wanted to give you guys a little disclaimer. This video today may trigger um, past traumas, hurts, pains that you may have had. So please understand that I have no intention at all today to hurt anybody, okay? I'm teaching how to be heaven on earth through these videos and hopefully we can learn today how to get some resolvement, how to get some understanding or that perspective or ultimately how to forgive those who hurt us. So if there is anybody watching this video today and this does bring on some sort of um, emotional response like a trigger, please talk about it with somebody. Please seek out a professional in your local area. <clears throat> I openly admit that I'm not a medical doctor. I have a PhD, hence my Dr. Linda Kramer name. So please speak to someone professionally in the medical industry if you, this does bring on any sort of triggers for you today, okay? So life lessons. We can do a simple Google search and say, what are life lessons? Life lessons in a nutshell are opportunities through our life whereby we get tested to see if we're going to pass the exam. So some of the life lessons that we have that we can learn are things like how to be generous, how to be kind, how to be loving, how to be understanding, how to be empathic, and most of all, how to be love, how to emit love to others. Okay, so I've got my book here again, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. If you've never seen my book again, this is my book. I'm going over to page 195 today, which is chapter 16, Life Lessons. Little excerpt that I've got here today is when I was standing in the white space talking to Karina, my great, 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 great grandmother. She explained it, that our life lessons are like a double sided blade. We must consider the, the flip side of our lessons, which are incorporated through the life contracts and a place strategically within our existence for us to learn from. So how do we learn how to be generous? You know, you look at somebody born into wealth, that silver spoon in their mouth. How can they ever learn how to be generous when it's just taking money out of that unlimited bank and giving it to others? So to learn a lesson like generosity, It'll be somebody who is down to limited funds. Say you've only got $20 to your name and you come across somebody who asks you for $5. It's a quarter of your personal wealth. Would you be freely giving them that $5? That's not for me to ask and it's not for me to judge if you do or not, right? But I'm just surmising some examples today. So please just follow along with where I'm going. <clears throat> then on the flip side of that, like Karina was explaining to me, when we look at the flip side with generosity, it is far easier to give generously to others. Oh, I'll go and help my neighbor. I'll do this for that person. I'll give that homeless guy a couple of dollars so he can buy some food. That is easy. But when we flip it over and we see how do we receive generosity, so we can give generosity as well as receiving it. So imagine yourself now as that homeless person where they may have had a multi-million dollar business that went downwards throughout the 2020s with all the craziness that we've been going through. And now that man is homeless, living on the side of the corner, only owning the clothes that he wears. How would he feel when somebody walks past him and gives him that $5? So are we able to not only give generosity, but we've also got to be able to receive it? 
<clears throat> so that's what Karina, in a nutshell, was explaining to me. So I, in back to my book now, page 195, I say, I call these opportunities. We find ourselves in opportunities whereby we must demonstrate the willingness to learn our lesson. It all comes down to free will and how much we do want to help others with their lessons as well. Because we must take our ego out of this. You know, our ego is only our thoughts created through society in this one life that we're leading now. So right now I'm Linda, but I've had hundreds or thousands or maybe trillions of other lives and I'll have more lives in the future past this time of earth. So we've got to take out that Linda ego and think about our soul on an eternal level as to where and what we want to learn, which creates that alignment within the energetic source of our soul. So then it progresses into heaven. Okay, because there are different levels in heaven. Some people say there's nine levels. Okay, which level did I go to? I don't know because it wasn't really explained to me at that point because I was always getting the return ticket. I wasn't staying there, okay, on that one-way trip. So let's go there. The topic today is how bad people teach us life lessons. You know, someone said to me, well, I've had a few people say it to me, why do we come here from heaven if heaven is so great? If heaven is eternally loving, why do we come here? And the simple answer I give to them is, imagine that you live in the desert. You know, you're out in the Sahara for your whole existence. And then one day someone says to you, hey, let's go to the beach. You've never seen the beach before. So you want to go to that beach. So you get that excitement. You build that anticipation. You get that emotional reaction to where you're going. So you're starting to get passionate. Oh my gosh, that anticipation of, I need a pair of bathers or swimmers. I need to get a beach towel. I need an, um, something to shade the sun on me so I don't get sunburned. Then when you get to the beach, you're in that euphoric emotional state, which I call is heaven. So now imagine someone who lives at the beach every day. They go down onto the sand, they're watching the waves. Oh dear, just another day in paradise. See how they lose that enthusiasm? They lose that, that euphoric feeling of appreciation. So this is why I feel we come back down to heaven. Because this is our opportunity to not only learn our lessons so we progress and become like ascended masters who I commonly refer to in my personal opinion to be Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and all those other great people that have walked the planet. So we lose that. <clears throat> so we have to come down here to value how treasured and adored that place really is. But then we also come here to learn our lessons. So how bad people teach us lessons. I had a client a few weeks ago who had a very traumatic occurrence with her child. Her child was killed by another person. She was extremely angry. She was still in grief. And she was uncontrollable with hatred for this person who was responsible. She wanted to learn how to get out of this rut of emotion that she was in. And please understand the disclaimer I said at the beginning, guys. If you do have something like this, you know, even remotely like this occur to you, please go and talk to a medical professional, okay? So I explained to her some big names that we all have heard of. One is Ted Bundy. One is Hitler. One is Genghis Khan. <coughs> Why? <clears throat> Why are these people allowed to do what they do to others that are so traumatic where so many people get hurt? 
So as a sort of response to this lady who had lost her child, I said to her, your child has its own life contract that it signed up before it was born. This child knew that it was only going to be here for a certain time. And it also knew what lessons it must learn. And it also knew what lessons it must teach to others. See how this is like the dual sided, the flip side. So I said to her, this person has that was responsible for this heinous act. I said, this person has contracted themselves to teach you a lesson. How can we learn how to grieve unless something traumatic happens to us? How can we ever learn how it feels to lose everything unless everything is taken away from us? How can we learn to value and appreciate every minute of every day that we spend with somebody unless that is cut short? When we look at someone like Hitler, look at the atrocities that he did. How could he ever want to be that person unless it was to teach me living now in the 2020s, 80 years after what he did, where I am still remembering someone who I don't want to be? How can I ever want to be a better person unless I reflect on the actions of others so I can say, right, thank you so much. Thank you, Hitler. Thank you, Ted Bundy. Thank you so much for letting me know that this horrendous acts of negativity or trauma can occur where I am now establishing in my own life that I do not want to be that person. Then we also have to look at another thing here. All those people that were at Auschwitz, what did they teach? They taught things like determination. They taught culture. They taught their own beliefs. You know, when you think of the Jews at Auschwitz, per se, the first things that come to my mind were they were loving, kind, generous people doing what they thought were right. So I sit here and I think all those people were just like you and me. You know, they had families, they had jobs, they had homes that they lived in, they had pets. They might have had some nice jewellery, nice clothes like most of us do. But ultimately, they could have been any one of us. And we may have been them in a former life too. Okay? So, when we think about what that one man did to all of those, what did I learn personally from that? Let's just go there straight away. I don't want to be a nasty person. I don't want to be politically driven. I don't want to be condemning and lying in public like he did. So I can thank him for showing me who I don't want to be. Then we get personal. Any one of those people, any one of those victims of Ted Bundy, any one of people who are killed by another and it's traumatic, I know. Please understand I care and love every person on the planet. But these acts do occur. So as I spoke to this woman, I said, imagine the life contacts, the life lessons, sorry, that your child who is now no longer living. Imagine the life lessons that this child had to demonstrate in order to pass that exam. How do we ever learn something like self-sacrifice unless we give up our life for somebody else? How can we ever teach unconditional love unless that love is taken away 
So then we learn the value of what it represented. So our life lessons sometimes are what we personally can do for others. How can we be nice? How can we be more giving? How can we be more appreciative, loyal, dedicated and committed to somebody else? Because they're all our life lessons. Unless we see that flip side where we must demonstrate that from them to us. You know, you look at narcissistic and abusive relationships and most people who are the abusers, you know, because I've studied psychology for years, they have some sort of trauma that's still unhealed from their past. So instead of abusing them back, we're not passing our test there. We're not learning the life lesson. So we must be compassionate. We must be more understanding. And most of all, we understand, we understand that we give that person love so they can heal. Pardon me, did you just hear that? I'm home alone and my front door just opened and then it slammed. When I started videoing, my front door was locked. <laughs> Hello? I'm glad I just caught that on camera because my front door was locked before I started filming. Okay, that was my front door slamming. <laughs> it opened. I heard it sort of like go in a jar and then it went bang. Okay, so let's get back to life lessons. <laughs> I'm never alone in my house, guys. Okay. <laughs> so life lessons, that's where we are today. <laughs> I'm sort of a little bit freaked out now, sorry, because I, I want to go and investigate it, but I'm not going to because I want to stay with these life lessons and put this video out there. And it is funny, I will go there. I'm going to do another video in a few hours about my ghost book. <laughs> that was like, talk about your ghosts, Linda, talk about your ghosts. <laughs> They're letting me know, talk about your ghosts. <laughs> See how I, I, I have to have this sense of humor with it. And I hope that that's just brightened the mood with what we're talking about. Okay. Because these life lessons, you know, some of them are very traumatic for us. Okay. So, you know, we can always be kind, loving, caring for other people. But we've also got to see that flip side where we have to allow other people to show those qualities to us as well. Okay. So we've got to allow people to be generous to us. We've got to be allow people to be kind to us. We have to allow people to show that compassion and understanding, dedication, loyalty and all the rest of them, right? <clears throat> so that's basically what this video today was about, okay? <clears throat> so bad people, when bad things happen, don't say, oh my gosh, this is a bad thing. Think of it as something to appreciate, this is how we learn, okay? When bad people do bad things, sit there and say, thank you. Thank you. And then fill in the blanks. Thank you for showing me that I don't want to be that person. Because I am, remember the power of I am words. I am more loving, kind, generous, blah, blah, blah. So we're identifying the life lessons that we want to pass. So when somebody is nasty to you or abuses you, say thank you. I am so grateful and I so appreciate that you have shown me this quality, this behavior or this even tone of your voice because that's not the person who I ultimately want to be. Okay, so I'm going to cut it short there because I am going to do another video tonight about ghosts. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go check out my front door, make sure that there's nobody in my house. <laughs> so I hope that this one's helped you a little bit, guys. Just consider your life lessons and also the flip side. <clears throat> you know, these people come into our lives, so they teach us the lesson as well. Talk to you all soon, guys. Bye.
To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.